Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because we're going to be taking a look at the most powerful Ryzen Mobile APU powered mini PC that I've ever had the chance to get my hands on. This is the all new, this is the all new Menace Forum HX90 and it's powered by the Ryzen 5900 HX. That's 8 cores, 16 threads with a boost up to 4.6 gigahertz and built in Radeon 8 graphics running at 2100 megahertz. And it's all shoved inside of a really nice looking case here. We have that anodized blue aluminum and the fuselage itself is injection molded with carbon fiber composite materials. It looks really, really nice. We've got some great ventilation on each side and plenty of I.O. Now this isn't the smallest Ryzen PC that I've taken a look at, but when it comes to that 5900X and this being a mobile APU, this should offer superior performance when you compare it to other mini PCs that are powered by mobile Ryzen APUs. Inside of the box, we're obviously going to get the mini PC. They've also included a 120 watt power supply. We have a VESA bracket with all of the mounting hardware. We've also got our SATA cabling because this does support two 2.5 inch drives along with an M.2 drive that's already pre-installed. And we get a 6 foot HDMI cable and our power cable for the power supply. I gotta say, I am a big fan of the design here. I think it looks absolutely amazing. We got that ventilation on top with those cool little geometric shapes and everything. Overall, it's a great looking mini PC. On the front here, we have a full size USB 3.0 port, our audio in and out ports, plus a USB type C port. This can be used for a display out or you can just use it for data. We also have our power button. Around back, we have two full size display ports, two HDMI ports, some more audio in and out, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, and four more USB 3.0 ports. One thing I forgot to mention when I was doing the unboxing was this does come with a stand so we can set it up in the vertical orientation. I think it kind of sets it off, it does look really good, and it's going to look amazing next to a monitor. When it comes to the internal specs, we have the Ryzen 9 5900HX, 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 3.3 GHz with a boost up to 4.6. Along with the pretty beefy cooler that they're using in this mini PC, which we'll take a look at in a second, they've opted to use liquid metal instead of regular old thermal compound, which should definitely help out with temps. For the GPU, we have that built-in Radeon 8 at 2100 megahertz, and the unit I have on hand right now has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. but this can be upgraded to 64 if you ever wanted to do that. This does have AX Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0 built-in, and this is running Windows 10 Home right out of the box, but you could install Linux if you wanted to. I wanted to do a quick teardown, but I'm not going to pull the CPU cooler off to see if they use liquid metal because I don't have any extra to replace it. This does have a 512GB M.2 SSD, and we have enough room inside of here to add two 2.5-inch SSDs. Flipping the main board over gives us a look at that CPU cooler and RAM, plus this has a little daughter board hanging off the front. This is our front I.O. RAM is fully upgradable with SODEM RAM, and this is a pretty beefy cooler when it comes to mini PCs. If you take a close look, you can see those dual heat pipes, and the fan looks like it's free-floating on top here but the case itself actually acts as the funnel. If we take a look at the top here, you can see that it has direct access to fresh air so we can pull it right in and push it over those fins. So with all that out of the way, let me go ahead and get this booted up. I'm gonna install some games, some emulators, and benchmarks for this video. All right, so here we are. This has Windows 10 Home pre-installed. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 9 5900 HX, and this thing is an absolute beast. I've been doing a little bit of testing with it. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz and the built-in Radeon 8 graphics. When it comes to these mini PCs powered by these mobile Ryzen chips, first thing I always like to do is just make sure that GPU can run at its maximum claw. And we are at 2100 megahertz here in GPU-Z with the render test going. And I've tested a couple games so far, it will stay at 2100 megahertz, so that's a big plus. Next thing I wanted to take a look at was the stock TDP. So I have Prime95, I'm just gonna run a test here to stress it out. And this is set at 50 watts from the factory. You'll see it jump on up. And this is definitely turning out to be the most powerful mini PC that I've tested on this channel with a mobile Ryzen APU. If you wanted to pick something like this up and use it as your everyday desktop, uh, it's gonna work out just fine. Email checking, web browsing, video editing, photo editing, this 5900HX will definitely handle it. We have that AX Wi-Fi built in, so everything loads up really quickly. I am connected to my 5 gigahertz network at the house. And another thing I always like to take a look at is WebGL performance. So we're gonna start off here. FPS is in the top left-hand corner over here. We're at 6500 fish. 
1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 15, 20, 25. We're still at 60, and at 30,000 fish, that's when it dips down just a bit, but uh, it's definitely handling it really, really well. Obviously, video playback is going to be great on this, whether you're streaming or doing it natively. You could turn this into a little Plex server. We definitely have plenty of cores and threads to help out with that. And overall, this has been really snappy, and I expected it to be, given that we have those 8 cores and 16 threads running up to 4.6 GHz in this little PC. I also ran some benchmarks, and the first one on the list here is Geekbench 5. Single core, 1,485, multi, 7,573. Looking great on the single and the multi, so let's check out some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. First up, Night Raid. Total score on this, 15,192. Firestrike gave us a 3,490. And finally, Time Spy with a 1,338. So these scores aren't bad at all for a mobile chip with integrated graphics, but we kind of need to see how this thing really handles gaming. So first up, here's Genshin Impact, 1080p, medium settings. We're running at 60. I did see it dip down uh, once there was a lot of particles on screen. It went down to around 58, but overall it's holding pretty strong at 60, and this is playable. Next on the list, Forza Horizon 4, 1080p with a medium-low mix. We have a lot of low going on here, but we got an average of 61 FPS. I was actually expecting to see a little more out of this, but when it comes to the RAM in this unit, it's only running at 3200 MHz, and having faster would definitely help out with this APU, but faster SODIMM RAM is really, really expensive. GTA 5 actually did really well. 1080p, normal settings, we got an average of 69 FPS out of this one. Here's Borderlands 3, 1080p, low settings. We got an average of 64 FPS, but I did see it drop below 60, especially when uh, some explosions were going on. But overall, I mean, it's actually looking pretty decent, and if you drop this down to 900p, I'm sure you could eliminate all of those drops under 60. Here's where we had to start dropping the resolution down a little bit. We have Dirt 5, 900p, low settings. We got an average of 41 FPS. I've tested this on a lot of mobile APUs, and it's just a really hard game to run on integrated graphics. Here's Doom Eternal, 900p, low, average of 40. Now, I do have the resolution scale set to off, so we're at 100% resolution scale. And dropping that down a little bit would help out a lot, but running this at 720p low would net you around 63 average. Cyberpunk 2077, coming in at 720p, low settings. We got an average of 34 FPS, and if you've ever tried to run this on any kind of integrated graphics, you know it's a beast. But uh, we're over 30 here. I was hoping we could get a little more out of it. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. And finally, we have Control, 720p low. We only averaged 34 out of this one. Now, if you wanted to lock it at half V-Sync at 30 FPS, you should be good to go. But now it's time to move over to my favorite part in these videos, emulation. First up, Wii U, Breath of the Wild using SimU. We're at 900p, Vulcan back in, async shaders. It'll run at 30 all day. I also tried this at 60, but we only got an average of around 48 FPS. And when taking this game up to 1080p, I do get an average of 30 FPS out of it, but I did see it drop down to around 28 every once in a while, so I took it down to 900p, and it actually runs pretty decently. Next up, we have Xenia, the Xbox 360 emulator. Here's Forza 2, and we can't quite hit 60 with this. It really favors NVIDIA GPUs. But you know, recently, the 5000 series desktop APUs were released, and with some faster RAM, you can actually get this to run at full speed on those. But with this mobile chip, it's just really struggling. And the final emulator I wanted to test here, at least for this video, was RPCS3, the PS3 emulator. We got Skate 3 going, Vulcan back in, 900p, it's running at full speed. And going into this, I had a good feeling it would, because this emulator really takes advantage of those extra cores and threads. 
We have eight cores, 16 threads, and as you can see, it's running it just fine. Whenever I test out these mini PCs, I always like to take a look at power consumption, and this is definitely going to be higher than some of the other ones, given that we have that higher end 8 core CPU, but at idle, it only pulls 18 watts. Gaming, we average 68 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out all 8 cores, 16 threads, and the GPU was 89 watts from the wall. And by the way, I'm using a kilowatt meter. This measures total system power consumption. So yeah, this thing is definitely a powerhouse for a mini PC. I was hoping to see a little better GPU performance, but you gotta keep in mind that we're stuck at that clock of 2100 megahertz. We really can't overclock it with the HX. And when it comes down to it, RAM speed really makes a huge difference with these APUs, and we're kind of stuck at 3200 megahertz unless you want to fork out the money for some really expensive, faster SODIMM RAM. But all in all, this is the most powerful mini PC that I've tested on my channel that includes a mobile Ryzen APU. I've tested out more powerful mini PCs that I've personally built, but those are using desktop variants. So if you're looking for a high performance mini PC and the apps that you tend to use can actually take advantage of those 8 cores and 16 threads, then I can highly recommend the Menace Forum HX90. Now there is one more video that I want to do on this. I'm going to add an external GPU over that M.2 slot, so I'll be running my operating system and everything from a 2.5 inch drive, but I got a really good feeling that if I pair this up with a GTX 1660 or something even higher end than that, we're going to see amazing performance because on the CPU side of things, we have plenty for anything we want to run. It really comes down to that built-in Radeon graphics that's kind of holding us back in gaming. That video will be coming soon, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. But uh, if you're interested in learning more about this, I will leave a few links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the Menace Forum HX90, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.